My name is Pete, and welcome to my garage. We have a 383 stroker with Vortec heads. Um, gentleman who bought this engine, um, we, we have no idea what the cam is or anything. We do have some uh, some long tube headers on it. Uh, it. It had a double pumper carb that really, really didn't run very well. Um, but we do have a MSD Pro Billet distributor that for the fuel injection system, in order to install the Fitech, we had to lock out the, the mechanical advance in there. Um, we also are running a MSD 6AL box and through this system uh, we did get the Go EFI 4 power adder kit. That gives us timing control so I can control the timing through the EFI kit uh, through the handheld instead of having to rely on springs, bushings, weights, uh, all that sort of thing for centrifugal advance or any kind of vacuum advance um, Yeah, so it's kind of a nice kit uh, also if we ever wanted to hook up some nitrous to this thing It'd be rather simple We are still running a return style fuel system um, Luckily the Phytech system has an integrated fuel pressure regulator there uh, this originally was a throttle body injected car which runs 9 to 13 psi of fuel pressure so we did have to drop the gas tank which on a third gen is not very fun at all and uh, installed a Walbro uh, I believe 255 fuel pump um, so that should supply plenty of, plenty of power for this setup um, it is a pretty torquey engine um, it, it, it pretty much tops out at 5,500 RPM though. So I mean, it's not a high RPM screamer by any means, but it makes a pretty nice little street engine. Um, pretty simple setup. All you got to do is uh, put screw in the uh, coolant temp sensor right there that goes to the Phytech system. Integrated in there is the throttle position sensor, the map sensor, um, all the injectors, everything's pretty much uh, integrated. Uh, there's a couple wiring connections we have back there uh, that I, when I cleaned up the uh, the wiring harness here I do have the fuses still accessible for the setup that come with the Phytech setup um, also there's a wide band that has to go into the exhaust pipe for for the main power source did go straight to the battery here I do have this wire right here run through some some loom nice and hidden back there um, you can't even really see it and we also thinned out the factory harness too so it's it's way less bulky wired up the uh, Phytech EFI to the factory fan relay and fuel pump relay and relocated the fuel pump jumper if we ever need to diagnose the fuel pump we can supply power to that uh, make sure that you know it's just a relay or that the fuel pump itself has gone bad um, we have a remote mounted coil right there. Other than that, pretty simple setup. I'll walk you through the setup. To set up the EFI system here, um, you got to first do your initial setup. And we'll set up the engine right here. I'll show you what we have set up. So you go to engine setup. Uh, pretty simple there. You have a number of cylinders. It's defaulted to eight. Uh, enter the cubic inch displacement. And in this case, it's a 383. Um, it defaults to 382. But anytime you make a change, you have to push the button, and that then will save it to the ECM. Um, if you make a whole bunch of these changes, like you change this to 381, come down here, change the cam to 1, all that sort of stuff, it's only going to save your last change. Now, the rev limit RPM, I had no idea what kind of cam was in this thing before we ever got it started up. Um, I set 6200 just for uh, you know for the heck of it there um, that's a little high for this thing uh, about 5500 is about all she really has in her 
So I'm gonna set, I'm gonna set it for about 5,800. Every time I hit it, I push the button and send it send it to it. Uh, warm idle 750. It's pretty good. Um, as far as the fuel pump pulse width modulated, since I have it run into a relay, I have set it to 100%. So it just constantly is turning that keeping the relay on. We don't want it pulsing the relay on and off. Um, okay. As far as the uh, tack setup or the two wire plus coil, I'm running that MSD distributor. And since I'm running uh, the timing through the Phytech system, I have it set for VR coil. And that's it for the basic setup. Now we can go back. Ignition setup. Right here, distributor base timing. Uh, we have it set for 13 degrees. However, whenever you actually set up the distributor, you set whatever the lock spark adjust is. Here, it's set for 19.9, which if you go to 20, it'll automatically come down there. So at 19.9, we just set that, come down here, lock it, and we can click the button, it'll lock it. So now the timing is gonna be completely locked at 20 degrees, which then it's pretty easy. Uh, go adjust your, if you have a timing light where you can actually change the uh, the degrees of timing then you can set it for 20 degrees and then just set it to where it says zero on the timing indicator and you'll be set up now this VR drift right here I locked the timing at 20 degrees revved it up to 4,000 rpms and see how much it actually drifted from that 20 degrees this one stayed dead dead set on 20 degrees so I said it had zero degrees of drift idle setup um, pretty simple. I set it for 750 RPMs. We'll go back here. Fan one setup. Uh, this vehicle only has one fan. I have it coming on at 176 degrees. Turn it off if it ever hits 172, which it doesn't really do very well. Uh, this fan is the stock fan and it's not really shrouded, so it doesn't work that well. Uh, you can see that it has option fan one enabled. Now the power adder kit does have set up for two fans. And right here, since I only have one fan, this is set for disabled. But you can put another fan in there and right, wire it up for two fans. Um, AC control. This thing does have AC on it. So if uh, AC gets turned on, we're going to bump the idle about 64 RPM to compensate for the load that the AC compressor puts on it. What else do we have? And then if you really want to reset all the learn values, you can, you can go into that. All right, so that's the initial setup. And at that point, this thing should be able to start. However, there are a couple things you need to set up. You do need to set up your IAC counts. So how far you have the throttle blades open. And also uh, you have your timing once it starts up that you have to set. Okay, so for dialing in the, uh, the IAC counts, which is very important for idle, um, we can go into data logging makes it pretty easy go into idle control you see our rpms right there our map spark advance iac steps here these this is how far it has the idle air control open uh here i'm going to start it up i'll show you where we change this at all right as it starts up going to lower the RPMs by dropping the IAC steps. On the throttle body unit itself, there's a screw right there. There's a screw right here. That's how we change our IAC steps. So you turn it. And with the vehicle in park, you want your IAC steps somewhere between Four to ten, I believe, is what they call for. So I shoot for the middle of that. And as you can see here, it's kind of hanging out somewhere around there. And it's not quite all the way warmed up yet. That was on a cold start. You see my spark advances about 20 degrees at idle. See the target RPM there? Cool attempts one twenty-two. We got fairly decent map signal at about 50 kilopascals. 
it's not terrible. This right here is our air fuel ratio that from our wideband sensor. So we can see right there it's idling roughly around stoic. A little further in depth in the tuning here we have your regular Go EFI tuning which gives us some basic parameters here. Um, back in the very beginning whenever we were setting it up I put it in for a uh, cam of two in the level of one to four right one being mild four being pretty wild we had no idea what it was so I put it as a two seems to have worked okay and I don't know if I necessarily want to change it because it, it rides okay um, your air fuel ratio targets here they set them pretty rich from the factory here uh, however since this is the power adder system you can see that uh, it also has boost level uh, air fuel ratios that it, that it shoots for uh, we don't even use that because we don't have forced induction so we're pretty much set here on our idle air fuel ratio target 14.6 uh, to 1 at idle is pretty good there um, it's not too wild of a cam so we can save some gas by not drowning it in fuel um, as far as our uh, cruise and everything 3000 rpm cruise set for 14.4 and we're about 14.5 is what I have it uh, cruising at so anywhere in between there like 2000 rpm it kind of splits a difference and runs about 14.45 so a little bit richer than Stoic, but not too bad at all. Uh, and, it, and it cruises pretty good there. Uh, we shoot for a wide open throttle. We're somewhere around 12.6 uh, um, to 1 or whatever to be pretty safe. And, and we're not running any, we're not hitting any detonation or anything like that. So I think it's pretty safe. As far as our spark map here, uh, idle advance, I got it at 20 degrees. Um, that's where I get about my best uh, map signal. So I get the most vacuum at about 20 degrees, so that's a good place to, to be as far as idle goes. You can see here, uh, as our engine speed increases, we start adding more timing. Um, you can see here we're at about uh, our cruise RPM, we're almost about 40 degrees of timing, which is, which is fine. I mean, we can, we can do that because that's low load. Um, this thing really doesn't cruise at 45 kilopascals, it does cruise. Um, probably about 60 or so so it's going to be a little bit less than that 39.8 uh, while we're cruising because it kind of blends it in and everything when we go wide open throttle as you can see as the uh, rpms pick up um, up to about 6,000 rpm we're running about 34 degrees of timing about 3,000 we're only about 30 degrees of timing i'm actually going to bump that up to 31 uh, these, this has Vortec heads, which some people say 36 degrees of timing. Others say about 32 degrees of timing for best uh, horsepower. I don't have a dyno. I'm just driving this on the street. Um, and this seems to be running pretty good with 34 degrees of timing at wide open throttle. Accelerator pump. If you have any lean bog whenever you step on or anything, uh, that's where this comes in. Uh, I didn't really have to add too much to that. It seems to work okay. crank and warm up all right this prime fuel multiplier if you have a problem with uh, hot hot restarts um, you can lower this number stock it was like 250 something so I lowered it down to 200 and I cranked up the crank IAC percentage about 10 percent so I had, had it set to 110 but it rounds down a little bit um, and that has seemed to help with the uh, with the startup and everything so I was having to I was having to uh, push down on the throttle just a little bit, allow a little bit of more air, but uh, open up that IAC and a little bit less fuel, and uh, this thing starts up pretty good now. My enrichment and everything during warm up and after start seem to be okay, so I'm not going to change that. Fuel cut control uh, if you want to run deceleration fuel cutoff, um, you can set the enable temp and whenever it reaches a certain map value when you're decelerating uh, then it will run then it'll start cutting all the fuel and everything out of it a lot of people have uh, popping issues uh, due to that um, so I don't know I, I, it, we never hit 24.8 we don't ever get that much vacuum out of this thing so it doesn't really come into play <laughs> 